Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So glad for the Spirit of the Lord and uh, what all God has already done, what all He's going to do yes. in these services. Uh, has everybody had a good time so far in the yes. Lord? Aren't you happy? Yes. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the park and uh, that uh, your rooms are okay. Um, but uh, if you have any need or anything, uh, talk to Gary. <laughs> he'll make sure everything's all right. Uh, but, but I do hope that everybody's comfortable. We've come here for both. We've come here really to get some rest. Good luck on that. <laughs> uh, but just to get away from everything. Uh, this is a kind of a setting where uh, we're out of the city. We're out here in the country in the woods, and uh, it's a beautiful setting to worship the Lord in. Uh, so I hope you soak that in. Yes. Beautiful lake to look at here. There's all kinds of things to do in the park uh, that they've got here. Uh, and uh, so take advantage of that. But the main thing, the very main thing is that God has drawn us here yes. to uh, bring a corporate expression into the earth and uh, Jesus said my words are spirit and they are life Amen. and the sound of it the scripture says has gone into all of the earth so what happens here is happening all through the earth and all through the heavens I know here that doesn't make any sense but in the spirit that's the way it is and that's why we want to be sure that everything we do and say in these services are of the Lord. Yes. Amen. And we want to be sure that we are doing the things that the Spirit wants us to do. Uh, when ministry, when I have ministry come up, I want you to be mindful that we want to do more than one minister in a service, if we can. Uh, and if the Spirit does it another way, of course, we're all going to say amen to that. But it, it better be really something. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. We're serious about this day, yes. right? Yes. I mean, I'm not here to have tomfoolery. We're here to hear from the Lord. Because, yes. man, we need it. We need to hear from God. And we don't have room for flesh in these services. And I'm talking to Brother Bob. So we need to be able to do everything uh, uh, in, the, in the order and in the flow of the Spirit. And I think we are going to see and hear things that uh, are going to change our life. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we're coming before you as a people, Lord. Yes, as a people that you yourself have handpicked Hallelujah. out of all creation, Lord. You have picked this people to be here this weekend to be a part together of this meeting, Lord. And I'm asking you, Father, that you, what happens in this room will happen and continue to echo throughout the ages to come even, Lord, what happens in these services, Lord. I ask you, God, that everybody that, that sings, everybody that speaks, yes. will be under the unction yes. of the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. That, Lord, the anointing will be strong in our midst, Lord. Hallelujah. And we know, Lord, that your spirit destroys the yoke from off the neck of your people, Lord. And we're believing for great deliverance. We're believing, Lord, for release in the heavens. We're believing, God, that you are going to rise up out of your holy temple, Lord. That you're going to fill the house with your glory. Hallelujah. Yes. That each and every one of us will say it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. To sit at your feet, Lord, and to learn from you, almighty God. So every body within this place, every physical body, I pray, Lord, your anointing upon it, Lord. Yes. 
that it will be renewed, that it will be restored, that it will be healed, that it will rise up with vitality, hallelujah, that weariness will leave, glory to God, and that your people will rejoice, hallelujah, over the things that you have done, Lord. Let every mind be at rest. I speak peace into every troubled spirit. And I ask you, Lord, that our heavens will be clear, hallelujah, as we pour out a blessing upon us that we cannot contain, hallelujah. And upon all of those that are participating electronically, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that your spirit will flow upon them also, hallelujah, that people everywhere, hallelujah, will enter into the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving in their heart, worship in their mouth, hallelujah. Hallelujah, as we glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father, unto you be all the glory and the honor and the praise yes. throughout the ages to come, world without end. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand tonight, this morning. <laughs> Whatever time of day it is, I don't know. You can tell I had a long night, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Mm. I'm going to sing a song the Lord gave me. It's the last one I have received from the Lord so far. And uh, looking for more to come. Yes. But uh, put up there... Uh, Spirit Wings, or I'm sorry, uh, In This Place is the name of it. In This Place, God has brought us here. It's a special place. We're in a place besides just this building. We're in a place in the Lord. And in that place, spirit wings flutter over our head. And angel voices sing, you are blessed. It might be D. That's a shot. Spirit wings flutter overhead. Angel voices sing, you are blessed. Oh. Uh -huh. 
works of God to be done. Amen. The works of God. We've seen the works of men. And we know we don't want that. But that's a counterfeit. There is another work being done. That's the works of God himself. Hallelujah. That's what I'm looking for this very day. Hallelujah. The mighty works of God to be done. When Peter and John went to the temple and saw that man laying there, the only thing that they could do, he's asking for alms. Silver and gold have we none. Uh They didn't say this, but we have something greater than that. And we're not going to try and count it to see how much it is, right? We're not going to take an inventory and say, well, I don't know if we have enough to help this man. Amen. That's why it was such as we have. And you never know what you have, folks. The depths of it, the richness of it, the immensity of it, until you start giving it away. Such as I have, I give unto thee. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Glory. And that's what I'm feeling in the Lord today is there's so much more in us than we realize. And when we get together as a people, it's unimmeasurable. Uh, Let me play this just with the guitar. Such as I have, I give unto thee, for such as you are, is living. And together we'll run Like Peter and John Let the world look on us His mighty works will be done Come on, musicians, join me. Hallelujah. Oh, such as I have, I give unto thee. For such as we are. Peter 
started broadcasting on uh, 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 Facebook and YouTube, uh, I realized that there was a real turn in what the kingdom word actually was doing. Because the kingdom before that, we were, we were like uh, hidden, covert. Without trying to be covert, it was covert. We weren't known by big churches. We weren't moving in the arenas of the mega church or, or even of the denominational churches. We were small people and hid out by God, really. And we didn't have any ego to be well known. It wasn't in our hearts to be famous or anything like that. That didn't matter to us. Every one of us was really dealt by, with by God now, not to seek that. Um, for the natural man, power corrupts. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and so we were always fully aware of that because we had seen what it had done to others yes. uh, that had gone down the good path and then somehow or another ended up in Babylon. Yes. So we, we were really that way. But when I started broadcasting on the Internet, I realized... I was doing what this song says. Let the world look on us. Because that's what they told the lame man. Look on us. Look at us. Don't just lay there. See who we are. And give us your full attention. Because something's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when I started broadcasting on the internet, I knew right then and there, David, God was saying, I'm going to have the world look on you. Amen. Now I'm putting on full display a word that people, uh, for the most part, would not understand. Doesn't compute in the natural mind. The natural man cannot, cannot receive the things of God. If it's talking about God, if the natural man is participating in some kind of a language that talks about God, it's a religiousness about God. They don't want God himself. They just want the religion about God. And we see that all over, right? People gather in great numbers just to hear about God. But the scripture is very plain. To get to know God himself, 
the natural man cannot be involved in that. It has to come from another place in us. Hallelujah. So I, I argued with the Lord a little bit about it. I said, God, uh, your word says don't give this word unworthily. You know, he told the priests in the temple in Isaiah's vision of the temple, told them don't take the garments that you're ministering in the holiest of all, doing the service of God in the holiest of all. When you come out from that uh, encounter with God, go into a side room and take those garments off. And don't wear those garments out into the streets. Lest you sanctify unworthily those that are in the street. Because those garments have been in the presence of the Lord. And God is actually in control of who comes to him to know him. No man can come to God less, unless the spirit draws him, right? Amen. So there's nothing we can brag about here, is there? Boy, did I make the right choice. Boy, was I smart enough to get this. Look at me. I'm here. Well, you're only here because God wanted you here, right? Amen. So this is what I'm learning in this day is that I cannot be a wallflower when God's ready for the world to look upon us. Hallelujah. And that's what's happening as we broadcast these services. They're going all over the world. Now, who views it is up to God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Always has been. Yes. First word we ever got when we started in the barn. Is there anybody here that came to our meetings in the barn? Donna Huboki, Paula Kelly. Uh, Paul, I'm sorry. Paula Gatlin, that is so new to me yet. <laughs> Paula Kelly Gatlin. Bobby Jean Hammond Taranjo. I'm going to get out of this, you wait. Anybody else been to the barn? That was where we first had our first in gathering. In the woods, in Hickman County, outside of a town called Bon Aqua, good water. Oh, hallelujah. And out in that barn, we had our first gatherings. People that had never driven down a dirt road came down there in their Cadillacs, in their expensive cars. Stones and dust and dirt hitting up against their cars. They come down that long dirt road through the country. Then they come to a, a hill where they went down. Has a big rock in the middle of it. So your car goes. <laughs> they got to find a way to get around that big rock. I tried dynamiting that thing out and I never could get it out. So they had to go around that big rock. Then they come down to a creek of water with no bridge. So you have to go down into the water, drive along it a little ways and come out on the other side on our land. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was a trip, wasn't it, Paula? Sent a guy after Paula and Mike at that time from the airport. I, I, I was picking up people from the airport, shuttling back and forth and we had nobody else. I had to send this young hippie guy to go get them. He was driving a love van, you know, that old Volkswagen uh, van with flowers on it. And uh, I won't tell you what he had written on it. <laughs> and I sent him to get them. And he had a suicide knob on it, <laughs> on the steering wheel. And he says to them coming in, he says, you know, I think I can make it to the bottom of this hill without ever touching my brakes. 
Paul has said that they were in the back of the van. He has a, some, a, some kind of furniture back there, and they're sitting on the couch, and they have their feet propped up against the, the, the thing on the other side of the van so that they don't go flying through the van. It was something else. Uh, Charlie Ryan, in the, some, some of you really know Charlie Ryan. Charlie Ryan thought, first time he came out there, that he was taken out there to be sacrificed. <laughs> Out in the middle of the woods, in the dark, because <laughs> I had to send somebody that Charlie didn't know to get him. But the first word that came to our gathering, that very first gathering we had, guess what it was? Do not market this. Think about it. God says. Don't market what I'm about to do. Leave it alone. Yes. Amen. Let me be the one to announce it, to take it where it needs to go. Amen. And I've tried my best to stay to that. So we're still largely unknown, except we're broadcasting out to Anybody out that has internet in any other countries viewing this, New Zealand, we have people viewing this in New Zealand. We've got uh, Austria, uh, Philippines. Uh, there's, uh, there's people all over the world viewing what's happening here, and it's no longer a secret. But that's God's business, not ours, right? Amen. Hallelujah. So just know that we're... We're involved in something that's bigger than us. Yes. Hallelujah. And don't put your hand to the ark when it looks unsteady. Don't put your hand to it and try to get it back in order again. When everything seems to get ready to fall over, you know. Don't, don't, don't take the part of God and say, oh, I can fix this. Let God handle these things. Oh, my. I don't know why I'm saying all this, but I believe the Lord's wanting us to be aware of the changes that are going on in the midst of our gathering and in the midst of your everyday life even so that we don't start to misrepresent uh, what God's doing. It is a holy thing. Amen. Holy Amen. unto the Lord. Amen. You are a holy people. Amen. Holy unto the Lord. You are his sanctified vessels. Yes. That God has himself put his approval upon. And has sanctified you unto the service of the king. Well, brother, I'm not a preacher. Well, I thank God for that. <laughs> because preachers are a dying breed. I'm telling you. Preaching is a dying breed. I'd much rather to see you as a minister. Of the Lord. Yes. Able to minister God. To anyone. Anywhere. Without any titles. Without. Yes. Come on. Give the Lord glory. Without any titles. Without any presentation of yourself. We are all ministry. Before the Lord. Hallelujah. We minister Jesus. That's our doctrine, that's our creed, that is uh, our message, Jesus. The Son of God, whom the Lord hath made both Lord and Christ. You can't go any deeper than Jesus. Can't go any higher than Jesus. Of all the things I pray that we do is I pray we stay humble. Yes. 
Do you know every great man of God I've ever known that was truly great was humble? Yes. Yes. Unassuming. Yes. If you ever met Preston Eby, who is known worldwide, I look at Preston as being the Apostle Paul of the kingdom ranks. And he is the most unassuming and humble man you'll ever meet in your life. I pray that for us. Amen. That we stay small. Yes. That we have a small footprint. Instead of presenting all of this. Flash. Glitz. Entertainment. God, deliver us from entertainment. God, deliver us from the spirit of entertainment. It is constantly trying to find its way into the kingdom ranks. And I pray that God's people will not allow that spirit of entertainment to enchant you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray you will not fall under the spell of it. Oh, hallelujah. Don't sit there. Don't sit there and say, entertain me, preacher. I want you to raise up in God. I want you to participate in God. Become a part of the ministry. I feel that down in my bones. There's a real danger at hand to where we must not allow ourselves to get brought over into that place where we want entertainment. God requires something out of us. He may require an amen out of you. (laughs) Wouldn't be bad to have it about right now. There's a man standing on the river. He's proclaiming life unto both sides. He is dressed in garments made of linen. He's a priest of Christ, the most high. The most
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there are millions upon millions pressed into this very place today. Yes. All heaven is here. Hallelujah. All heaven is here. And you'd think we were E.F. Hutton the way that they're like this. Hallelujah. They have their ear toward us. Hallelujah. They're saying, call me forth. Call me forth. Let this be a word to both sides of the river. Let this be a word from the middle of the river under both banks at the same time. Call me forth. Hallelujah. Because it's happening here, not there. This is where the Lord is appearing in a people. And that realm is the realm that is peering into us, looking into us, waiting to hear that certain sound. The sound that brings life. The sound that brings forth on both sides of the river. A life that transcends existence. No matter if, like Paul said, whether I am present or I am absent, I am the Lord's. And it's all in Jesus. Thank you, Father. Diane had a, a, uh, was it a vision or a dream? A vision. A vision. And you saw a people that uh, she thought it was like an in-gathering. It felt like an in-gathering. And we were all in a circle holding hands, worshiping the Lord. And Jesus appears in the midst of us. And we all start to flow into him Amen. and up into him. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, praise Amen. the Lord, man. Hallelujah. That. Hallelujah. That is what God is doing. Amen. And I told her, Gary, I said, there was a woman way back in L.A., Dorothy, Evelyn Isaacs, that wrote books, fantastic writings, and I believe she was the first one I had ever heard coined the term in Christed. You may be seated. In Christed. And that's what that was that Diane saw, was a people, Jesus, the Christ of God. All of us came into that anointing that is the Christ, the anointed one, and we all became in Christed into the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anointed with the same anointing that we were brought into, which is Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. And that is so much, there's so much more of that that one day we will hear about. But that was a true event that she saw. I'd like to think that's what's happening here. Amen. I'd like to think that our hearts are joined as those hands were joined in her circle, yes. that our hearts are joined and the centerpiece is Jesus, yes. the Christ, and that we are being drawn into his expression as he is, come on. So are we in this present world. As he is, so are we in this present world. In Christed. Glory to God in the highest. We're hearing things that are turning our worlds upside down. I'll tell you, everybody's got their own viewpoint about it all. 
and man, I don't know hardly anything. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not uh, um, a scholar on this day at all. I wouldn't presume to be. But I'm telling you, we're all, we're all seeing a certain world end and another world begin. Hallelujah. I, I'm standing on the shoulders of those that came before me. I am. <laughs> I'm not standing by myself. I'm standing on the shoulders of, of David's dad, of Bill Britton, uh, uh, of, of uh, B.S. Westlake, Ronald Sitzer, Dale Davis. We can go on down the line of men that have meant a lot to me. But those that I know and those I don't know, Andrew Jukes. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. And God is doing something in us that he didn't do in them. Charlotte Taranjo. I'm standing on their shoulders, folks. Brother Westlake said this. My desire is to take someone who has not come into the things of God as I have and to grab them and lift them up to where I am but not stop there. My desire is to lift them up to where I am and then lift them higher than I am. Amen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm telling you. I'm feeling something this morning. Our desire isn't to bring you to where we are. We're trying to get out of where we're at. <laughs> Why would I want to bring you to a place that has turned into a burning hell? A corrective state. Why would I bring you to a place where God is wanting me to leave and come into another place? If I do anything, I want to lift you higher, 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 higher yes. than where we are. Hallelujah. Yes. And then guess what happens? You turn around and you grab Brother Bob and you bring Brother Bob where you are and then lift him higher. Yes. Woo! Higher, 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 higher coming into the fullness of God Amen. by a people whose only desire is to lift other people higher than they are. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 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 Yet not I but it's Christ
Lord a hand today. Hallelujah. Such deep matters that God is dealing with us on. That Pentecost, Passover, any of the other feasts, Charismatics, have not touched on. But that's to be expected because we are following on God in a way to where he is bringing us into a priest-king order that uh, is nothing about ego, it's nothing about power with men. It's about power with God. And the ability to deliver creation so that uh, it's heady, it's, it's weighty, it's deep, and it's mysterious because we don't know a whole lot about Melchizedek yet. And you know, Melchizedek is a message. Melchizedek is in order. So we can talk about Melchizedek, but it isn't like as though there's a Melchizedek message that we all must learn. Melchizedek is the order of tabernacles. And it's the great ingathering tabernacles is. The feast of ingathering, the feast of booze, the feast of entwinement. And, and that is where our ministries uh, are called unto. And at the same time, God is able to visit people of all orders, of all ranks, through such a ministry. Because that's what Jesus did, isn't it? Didn't Jesus eat with the sinners? Yes. He didn't think anything of sitting next to a cussing sailor and have a meal with him. And, and he, he ministered to, to men of low stature. Wherever they were, he ministered to them, healed them, and fed, fed them loaves and fishes. But there came the time when he started focusing on the 12. There came a time when he would draw them aside. And the Mount of Transfiguration is a good example of when Jesus started ministering to a few of the 12. To where he singled out Peter, James, and John. And said, come with me and let's go up into the Mount, Mount Hermon. And let's, uh, uh, and stay with me. He told the others, stay and pray for me. Now, I guess that was the Garden of Gethsemane. Sleep on. <laughs> But he took Peter, James, and John up into the mount. And uh, there they saw the three orders, the three elements of God. Moses and Elijah and Jesus come together and discuss Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And who, all, who knows what else they discussed. So here was three, three elements of God. And the uh, 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 disciples looked upon that. And later they told Jesus, Master, it's been really good for us to be here. And now we want to build three altars. <laughs> to honor the three things that we saw together. And a voice came out of heaven. 
This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. And now you see, we can't hear Passover anymore. We can't hear Pentecost anymore. The only thing that really speaks to us, folks, is tabernacles. Our spirit is yearning to hear a word from behind the veil representing the fullness of God. God tabernacling with men. And that's what our spirit is yearning for. Our soul has other ideas. Our soul wants to feel. Our soul wants to get emotional about the whole thing. Our soul wants to have something that it can, can communicate with our carnal man and say, see this, I want to, I want to show you something. This is God in, in, in here, and I know you'll understand it because, you know, I've received it from the Lord. And the soul is that which causes us to be so mixed up at times. Soulish. But the spirit is being married. There's a marriage going on. And out of twain, one new thing is being formed. Hallelujah. Do you know I believe that there's something besides flesh and spirit? All we ever hear about is, uh, well, Paul said about the same thing when he said uh, uh, circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't matter. It's the new man. It's not whether you've been uh, uh, circumcised, whether you haven't been circumcised. It's the new man. It's neither male nor female. Well, that's all I know. Well, not today. Not today. But in the reality of things, that's the only things there is. Male and female, bond and free, neither Jew nor Greek. None of those, neither of those things. There is a new man that makes all of those irrelevant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is something besides flesh and spirit in the new man. The new man is a a composite man. He is heaven and earth. He is life and death. Life and death have a coexistence. And you can only know life if you know death. Because it releases you into the other life that's waiting for us. That song we just sang, right? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But unless you misunderstand me, it's not I that liveth. <laughs> But it's Christ that lives. It's a composite. It's a compoundment that creates one, something other than. That's how the Greek says it. I am changing you into something other. You are something other than what we have always known. We're getting ready to really and truthfully come into some things in God that's going to blow our minds. And, and, and we are going to lose this thing where this is all there is, flesh, spirit, male, female, bond, uh, free, Greek, Jew. We are going to start coming into a place in God where we see everything as God sees it. Oh, hallelujah. And everything is entwining itself with each other. Chemistry does that all the time, Right? It, it takes two poisons and turns it into salt. 
So one of those separate elements that makes up salt, either one of them, sodium and chloride, will kill you. But when they're brought together, they become the salt of the earth. Water is two gases when put in a certain chemical equation, two two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, you have what's called H2O that everybody knows. Everybody's a chemist because they know that equation. But think about what happens when it becomes one. Do you see it as gases? No. It no longer has the property of gases. It now becomes liquid. Something entirely different, although composed of those other things. H2O is something other than hydrogen or oxygen. That's what we're becoming. Glory to God in the highest. When we talk about immortality in life, we're not talking about flesh and blood. A flesh and blood body that's been given uh, some kind of a cellular level uh, of, of being able to live forever. Your cells automatically have the ability to live forever. Did you know that? It's built into them. Scientists will tell you that. Your cells should live forever. They have the capacity to do it. But somebody put a death sentence in the DNA. Just imagine that. Somebody put in that DNA that you're only going to be able to live a certain amount of years and then your cells are going to start having bombs go off all over the place. When your body starts switching over from the growth from an infant up to an optimum age, and then from that point on, cells start dying at a faster rate than they start producing. That's called aging, and the result of that is death. But God has something else in mind. Oh, Rikaramamana Namaha. We're going to have to change our language. We're going to have to change our viewpoint. We're going to have to get another perspective on what God is doing on some of these terms that we've used for years. And they became just words. And God's wanting to show us the intricacies of it. If we're going to move from the assembly line in God's business to the front office of God's business then we better start learning about the business. (laughs) Because now you're not just a hireling, right? We we aren't hirelings anymore. We're not being voted to a board on a church somewhere and we're not being elected to a pastorship that they're paying our salary for. We're not hirelings anymore, folks. We are starting to come into a front office employment that has life as our salary. Hallelujah. Life as he has life. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. A life never ending. And that's what God is wanting to teach us, to broaden our perspectives come out of the narrowness of our consciousness of what those things that we, we, we think we know. We are just talking before the service with somebody that when we heard truth, we all said to ourselves, I think I knew that. <laughs> I think I knew that. But I didn't know it until I heard it. Until it was ministered to me, Judy. And then I realized, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, hallelujah. I heard that from another place in God. That was buried in my recesses of my being. And all I needed to do was just hear it once. And it brought my remembrance back. 
Other than that, we only knew what the world was telling us and what the church was telling us. That's all our knowledge was. But now we are starting to come into a knowledge that comes from the Father of spirits. From the Father who has full counsel within himself. Who wants us to understand the business. And when God starts messing with us, we hear from God and he says, you know what he says to us? It's nothing personal. It's only business. <laughs> nothing personal. But I have a business. And I've got to keep that business on time. And I have appointments. We were talking about before the service. We have crossroads here. We're good. This is a crossroad. This weekend's crossroads. We, all paths have led here, and now there's a crossroad for all of us. And we're going to make a change of direction after this meeting. Your life is going to start moving in another direction than what you had in your heart for it to move in. Because it's an encounter meeting where we encounter God. Aren't you tired of preaching about him when we can encounter him? Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we can come face to face with him, hallelujah. And, and put our hand in his hand, glory to God, and hear the Lord himself speak. I believe this is that kind of meeting, hallelujah. As my good friend Stacy Wood used to say, the throttle is in your hand. How fast you go on this train is up to you. How much are you going to yield? How much are you going to surrender? How much are you willing to let go and hold on? How much are you willing to allow God to be God? Hallelujah in your life. Glory to God. There's, there's fast growers and there's slow growers in God. There's those that instantly are changed and transformed and they hear the word only once and they're immediately in another place in God. And then there's others that, that leave claw marks the whole way. <laughs> digging in. And I can just see Jesus, you know. I'm not ready yet. Visit me in about 10 years. <laughs> Leaving claw marks all the way. And Jesus is saying, when you're getting tired of getting drugged, just stand up and you can start walking with me. <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you. How much does it mean to you to live? Truly live. We haven't even lived yet. We call our natural existence living. It's not even, we're still the walking dead. Yes. When it comes to real life, we have to cross over the river to get real life. You have to become a true Hebrew. Go to the other side. Amen. If you will leave all you know here, and if you will leave uh, everything you've accomplished here in Ur, and, and, and if you will cross over the Euph Euphrates with me, I will give you all that you see. But you got to leave all that to come into that. Hallelujah. But God's with us the whole way. Strengthening us. Overcoming us. We get here in spite of ourselves, not because of ourselves, in spite of it. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. Glory to God. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, let's give him a hand this morning. Are you ready? Hallelujah. I want Josh Gwinnett to come and, and, and leave room for another minister if we have the time. Josh, if you can. And uh, we'll have somebody else get up after Josh. And we're going to try and do that in these meetings. And again, if God has something else in mind, I'm, I'm all for it. Amen. But that's, 
That's my desire. Come on, Josh Gwinnup from San Diego, California. I just thank God for the opportunity to be here with you. It's been a little while, and, and for some, I've never met you before, but I feel joined in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, God has made us one, not by our natural lives, but by the Spirit. We're one. Those that are joined to the Lord are one Spirit. Hallelujah. And so we're sharing a unity that doesn't come by the flesh, thank God. And as I say, you know, we hear the Word of God, and I'm talking about what, what's being spoken in the worship and all these things when we come together. And uh, I'm amazed more and more all the time. Of course, we're growing, you know. I, I, I feel like I'm growing. Some people meet me in the flesh and they say, yeah, you look like you're growing. <laughs> Say you're you're getting taller still, but it we're we're you know we've left behind the the worry, like what was said. You have in the natural you're you're going to grow, and then you're going to begin to disintegrate <laughs> according to the natural, but but not so in the spirit. Thank God, because uh, though the outer man is perishing. Yes. The inner man is being renewed day by day. And the Son of God is, you know, he was born. We sing these songs so wonderful on my mother's side and on my father's side. He grew in stature and in favor with God and man. Yes. And he was the display of of the reign of God. When, when I was hearing these words, and I'm becoming more and more, I'll just tell you my thoughts. 20 years ago, when the Lord really began to get a hold of me, and he had had a hold of me before. I pictured myself when Bob was showing that person with their nails digging in. That was me. I can remember. Because, of course, I grew up in meetings like this since I was, but I can't remember any time that I wasn't in meetings like this from, the, from when I was a little child, you know. And uh, the saying is, is I was a drug baby. I was drugged to church <laughs> from as long as I can remember. My mom's here. She drugged me. And my mom and my dad. And, and of course, thank God for all, the, all my family and the people that surrounded me in the kingdom of God that were praying for me all the time when I didn't know uh, what I was doing. But I remember having a real experience with the Lord when I was very young. And it's funny, you know, because uh, my mom remembers more of it than I do. And I'll just share this little testimony. We were in this little home service in Iowa. We were having services in, uh, in a basement. And uh, somebody came ministering the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And all us young children, we were just growing in the things of God, you know. And So I can't really recall very well, but I know, and my mom reminds me, and I can kind of remember it, there was some rough years right ahead of it. But I must have been about 11, 12 years old. And uh, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. My mom said, I spoke in tongues for the next couple hours, you know, all through the car. And I was one of the only ones at that time that received like that. And I remember just this, I remember I could go to my room and I just sensed the Lord with me, you know. Now I was, uh, I was uh, an outcast in the school system. So we moved from Colorado to Iowa when I was about seven years old. And, uh, I was just a complete outcast. I couldn't fit in at all. You know, that was the days where kids were, it was the 80s, kids were wearing jean jackets and they were wearing all the cool buttons, you know, of rock bands and all that stuff. And the only buttons I had were the ones that my mom and dad had, and it was like, Jesus loves me, you know. (laughs) 
And I was so ignorant, I just didn't know any different, you know, so I wore those to school. Needless to say, I didn't get in the most popular list right away. So, you know, I, uh, I walked with the Lord, and I, I, I sensed the presence of the Lord, and, and it just amazing that you just, I had, you know, I almost had times in my childhood I can remember as though there was something that had happened even before I could remember, as though I had had this fellowship with God through Jesus. It was so real. I can remember it was so real. And I can remember as I came into my junior high age, and uh, it was disturbing me that I wasn't able to fit in with uh, my peers in school and so forth. And uh, uh, so I started to go towards basketball. That became my, my way to gain acceptance in my or in my peers, you know. And I can remember praying. I can remember asking the Lord to bless me in that. And he did. And uh, I, I, I really quickly grew, you know, by the time I, was, I got my height, I was 14 years old, and I was starting to dunk a basketball. I haven't got to the point, I tell my kids they can't believe I could do that. <laughs> but I could take the ball and put it under my leg and dunk it. When those kids, you know, when that was something you couldn't do as a young man, not, not many kids. And so all of a sudden, my whole world changed around. <laughs> and uh, I transferred to another school, a bigger school from out of the suburb we were in. And uh, all the kids, they just thought I was the greatest thing in the world, you know. Boy, oh boy. The thing that I had blessed or had prayed for became the greatest curse to me. I thought about it when, you know, Bob was speaking about how the Lord takes out his people. And uh, I get now, you know, spending more and more time in the scripture and, and spending more and more time where the Lord just begins to unfold to me all of the precious wisdom that's been hidden in the scripture. And we know it's been slaughtered by the theologians, okay, of this world. It's been, I mean just made a mess. But when, by, the, by the Spirit of the Lord, we begin to see our lives wrapped up in all of the types and the shadows of Christ, all the way back to Moses, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, and how he brought them out in the, of that place of uh, bondage to corruption. And I'm, I'm sure they just had on their mind a freedom that they assumed they were going to have the moment they came out of that bondage. But they came right into a different kind of slavery. <laughs> right. Right. We don't, now, I don't look at it as slavery. I'm as free as I've ever been. But I'm a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the dependence that I had on the world and everything that I can gain in the world has been exchanged for a dependence on Christ that I'm still just beginning to recognize the true benefits of it. Amen. Amen. Because I'm finding, as much as I thought, well, I lost my life and now I'm Christ, the Lord's still showing me day by day those things that I'm still having to let go of my former life. And everything that was considered to me in the past as a great blessing and a tremendous gift, the Lord's giving me the strength and the wisdom to take it and to lay it down Amen. so that he can put something greater. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm realizing all that I desired in the past, which was to please God and to be something great, the Lord's exchanging that for an, a, 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 an honest, hard desire to serve people. Hallelujah. It, it's coming out of an intellectual concept of the greatest in the kingdom shall be the servant of all to a living reality where we begin to see the fruit of it, not by knowledge, but by a walk. Where it's the Lord walking in us and he said, no man takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This is the authority that's been given Amen. to those that have been called to be sons of God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I didn't have that authority, right? And, and, and we're still learning of that. And I found out when in my teenage years, after I had received what I considered to be the blessing of all these natural things, you know, 
and chased basketball into junior college and all this mess I won't go into, I found out I was in the greatest prison I'd ever encountered before. Yeah. And, uh, and so the Lord put in my heart a cry, you know. And I see the, the, you know, the, the similarities of that which God dealt with his son, Israel. He brought him out of bondage. They so desired to come out of that bondage. But as soon as they came out and were having to learn to depend on God in a way that they had never known, come on. their first desire was to go right back to Egypt. Yes. Yes. They wanted to kill Stephen when he told them the truth, but he says, you, you're, you have the same heart of hardness that was in your fathers yes. 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 who turned back to Israel or back to Egypt in their heart. Oh, hallelujah. Same ones that killed the prophets and everybody that came to you. Yes. Amen. So the Lord is doing, he's, he's removing this from us and showing us the blessing of true liberty. Hallelujah. And what that means, that true liberty is what Jesus said, that I don't do anything except what I see my father do. Hallelujah. Jesus was the freest man in the earth, and yet he was a prisoner to the will of the father. And this is the scripture uh, over in Luke. I want to read it. I just pulled it up as I was hearing the word of God this morning, the word of the Lord that is ministering. Let's see. What is it, the 20th? It was when Jesus was asked when the kingdom of God was going to appear. Let's see. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, it's Luke 17, 20. This is the, I want to read it from the Young's literal translation. And having been questioned by the Pharisees, when the reign of God, the kingdom of God, but it's the reign of God, yes. doth come. Yes. He answered them and said, the reign of God doth not come with observation. Amen. And, and we're born after the natural in our first understanding. The Lord's just really, you know, this season that has been such a curse to the world. And, and I, I don't know how to say this without almost sounding offensive, but. In many respects, it's been a tremendous blessing. And uh, our solitude, God can really use. Amen. Yes. We would never choose it of our own choosing. Right. Jesus did. He, he knew there were seasons when he had to separate himself out. It, it's amazing that the Son of God was tempted in every way that we are tempted, yet without sin. They came to make him a king on that level, yeah. on that plane of the flesh. And he hid himself from them. Yeah. And many times he separated himself out from the multitudes. They, they, they were in love with what they could understand right. with their carnal senses. But he told them again and again, you don't understand the reality of what I'm doing here. Yeah. You came for the, for the loaves and the fishes. You, oh, you, you came for what ministers to the body. I was listening to old ministry talking about the miracles of times past and how it was so glorious, you know, to see tumors just shrink before people's eyes and all these things. But what people rec began to recognize was is people were coming and their body was being healed, but there was hardly any other change in their life. So that that outer blessing that is so real to us according to the flesh and it is you know I think about when I met my wife it was her beauty that attracted to me attracted me okay she knew it too she was a flirtatious little thing no I'm joking <laughs> well I'm kind of joking she's probably watching this she'll be laughing at me. 
because I had, I had just come out of a relationship and I said, I'm done with women. I'm done with them. I want nothing to do with them. So when we started together, I said, nope, I'll be your friend. But that's it. Oh, boy. We got married after six months. So that <laughs> I was so strong. Whew. But I recognized it was her beauty that attracted me, you know, but but God had a plan all along. Yes, sir. He, he knew, you know, there was something that was going to go far beyond just Amen. the infatuation that comes from the flesh. Yes. Thank God for it. Yeah, I, I see the blessing of God in all these things that he, he can use the flesh. Thank God he does. And like what's been said, he's not looking just at flesh and spirit as, you know, just a black and white or this. He, he's, he's, he is truly bringing a new creation. Yes, he Amen. is. Thank God that he's, he's using both. Amen. And though flesh and blood in its current state will not inherit the kingdom of God, he's creating a new, hallelujah, yes. Yes, race. And it's not of the human race that we know. No. So there'll be no division as there is in the human race Lord. because it's one new man. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But he, the, the Lord will use these things and, and he'll attract us to get to the deeper, to really begin to work where the real battle is at hand. And that's why I think all this, see, we're looking at the outer. And, and, and it, we're not going to take away from the moment that we're looking for healing of the natural body. And we want to live as long as we can in these natural bodies. But when we come to the knowledge that whether I live or whether I die, I'm the Lord. And Paul really came to a great revelation. I think it was because the man had been beaten to death yes. in the natural. Yes. That he said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yes. If the Lord allows, get me out of this flesh. Amen. I'm done with this corruptible body. I'm looking for this corruption to put on incorruption. Yes. And I'm not going to do it by the flesh. The Spirit of God that has been put within me, that's been joined together with my spirit, is now being joined together with my soul. And my body is going to begin to partake of that living bread, which is the bread that came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and never die. And we're talking about a life that's going to swallow up the death of the body, but it's not going to do it through the outward man. I'm going to stop because they didn't put the screen up like I told them to. I said, you got to put that screen up because I'll start spitting. And everybody that's afraid is going to run away. I went, I, went into this, I, went into this, I went into this church here recently, and it was during all this. And they have a clear platform. And I didn't even think about it. But when I got done, there was spittle all over that whole thing. And I went, oh, my goodness. Somebody bring the disinfectant. If we're, if we're dependent on the flesh, ladies and gentlemen, we're of men most miserable. Yes. Amen. The spirit of the Lord that's been put within us is swallowing up all death. Amen. He's the life. He's the lamb in the midst of the temple. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All these songs that I've been singing of Bob and Charlotte's when I was since a little kid, they become more and more real every time I sing them. Just as the word of God becomes more and more real because he's unfolding it unto us. Not by, not by a carnal understanding, but by a living word that we're walking out day by day. Amen. Praise God. So just to finish up here, he says, the reign of God does not come with observation. Thank God he has hidden it from the wise and the prudent. Those that want to get their hands on it. And manipulate it. We see the power of the world. We see. You know, I believe with all my heart, we have so many people that they really want to do right that, are, that have, and I know there's a lot of corruption, but I believe there's people that want to do right that are in the governments of men. But that power just corrupts flesh. Why did Jesus hide himself? Why did he not allow him to make him a king on that order? 
because there was something greater that was going to be revealed through the process of time as that seed went into the ground and died. It was going to bring forth a multiplication, a divine increase that could be expressed no other way except that Jesus meet his appointment with death that we also may become a partaker of that word, that seed of God, that it might grow up within us as a living word, that it might bear fruit, that it also might go into the ground and die, that there might come an increase, hallelujah, perpetual to an increase of the peace and the government of God that there'll be no end of. Amen. It's going to do more than just fill the earth. It's going to fill the galaxies. Our God is a father. Hallelujah. He said, fill the whole earth. He's going to fill the whole earth. Nor, nor shall they say, lo here or lo there. For lo, the reign of God, the kingdom of God is within you. There's so much that can be said. I know it's going to be said, but it's not just going to be said. We're in the day when, and I, I agree with what, what's been said about ministry and preaching. Uh, there's a blessing. I, the scripture says it. Paul said, God chose the foolishness of preaching yes. to save them that believe. Yes. And I really enjoy preaching and I enjoy the word of God. But the ministry that is going to continue to unfold in this day is going to go far beyond what we call preaching. Yes. Because the world is groaning. Yes. They're, they're, they're in a travail for something that they don't even know. And we're really just, in a real living way, we're really just coming to a real knowledge of what this is. I mean... That's the thing. We ought to have great expectation because the, what we do understand is just scratching the surface. Yes. Because we're not going to fully know it until it's birthed in us. Yes. It's hidden until it's birthed. Praise oh. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And there's a man child that's being caught up to God in his throne. Yes. That's the reign of God that's within. Yes. It's got to be ruled here though first. There's no, see, the, the, even concerning the church, he said, you know, how can a man rule over the church of God if he can't even rule over his own house? He was talking about, you know, having his children in subjection and all these things. Sometimes I wonder, you know, Lord, I don't feel like I'm doing a whole lot. I'm just, we have service and it's just my children. A lot of times, just a home service. But then the Lord will back me up and he'll say, you're doing just what you're supposed to be doing for this time. Just, just get your house in order. That'll preach. Okay. And, 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 and sometimes you can take away everything else. Take away all the great understanding, all the great revelation. Just, just live with that in the midst of this generation and it'll preach. Praise God. Praise God. So my wife preaches. She doesn't preach behind the pulpit, but see, she's preaching. Her life is preaching. Praise God. My children are preaching. Praise God. And there's many among us. They're not standing ever hardly behind a pulpit in front of people. And yet when they begin to live, people are seeing the reign of God. Hallelujah. But now it's becoming more than just that which is hid within. But now it's becoming a manifestation of the life of God out in the open. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless you. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Now, Josh, uh, uh, your church has more people than my church does. All right. <laughs> These people don't, I think, realize how many kids you have. <laughs> Josh's got a bigger church than all of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the, the waitress told me that uh, uh, lunch would be from 12 to 2. And if we're there past 2, we got to sweep up. <laughs> so uh, um, it's 1230. I want Donna Huboki to come up. Uh, we prayed for you last night, Donna. 
And uh, it was amazing the fact that God has brought Donna here, and I want her to be able to at least give glory to God for it. Let's give Donna Huboki a great hand. Amen. We've known Donna for a long time. I won't tell you how long. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Oh, hi, I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm grateful to be here. I don't want to forget to share what God did. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you. Um, Amen. <laughs> um, well, I was... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I wrote to the house of the Lord and I said, I really need prayer. I really need prayer. I was hurting in my body and I could hardly move or anything without pain. And, um, uh, you know, my son was going through some things. Um, long story short, um, I, I know I'll say that a lot. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying not to take too much time, but um, I got a call from Bobby Jean, which blessed me out of my shoes. I never expected that, and she just called at the perfect time, and she prayed a very powerful prayer into me. And you know, I was saying, I, I, I'm in pain. I don't have the finances to come to the meeting. I, um, this, that, I don't want to be around COVID and all these things. She said, well, we're just believing for miracles. She never said, you know, um, <laughs> she said, we're just believing for miracles. She didn't answer anything or she didn't say, well, you, you know, we want you to want you to be there or we don't. Um, and I'll tell you what, the Lord, I kept saying, Lord, I need you to show me. I know everybody else probably knows what I'm supposed to be doing, but I need you to show me. Yes. And um, I think I heard you, Bob, on Sunday mornings saying, you know, well, and like Brother Josh and Brother Bob, um, everyone's saying that God is within us. Yes. The kingdom is within us. And yes. so I was <laughs> one of those that was kicking and screaming, and I was saying, Lord, I don't want to go. And I had all these excuses. And, um, but anyway, um, I kind of wanted to go in order, but it's all over the place. And I'm not used to speaking in front of people. Uh, so um, anyway, my son was at the house for a few days. And I... Um, let's see. Um, I told him that Bobby Jean had prayed for me, and I said, she's trusting that I'm healed. So anyway, a, a week or so went by, I saw him again, and he said, well, you couldn't, you couldn't do that a week ago, Mom. You couldn't even go up the steps. And he said, I think you got healed. And I, it took him on the outs from somebody out looking in. I had forgotten that she was trusting that I was healed, and I had forgotten that I, well, anyway, I just needed to receive it. And so um, I wasn't feeling well at all. I went and got all these tests. The doctor ordered ultrasounds, and oh, I think you have kidney stones, and, and, and this, that, and the other. And um, guess what they found? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. They didn't find anything. I mean, um, just a little uh, uh, things here and there that can be fixed easily. And the doctor kept saying, well, these are normal. There's nothing wrong. I don't know why you're having pain. So I think I, I emailed them a couple of days or a day maybe before the conference, which I'm embarrassed to say. I emailed them and said, um, I'm not coming. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have the money and all of this and that and the other. And yesterday, I woke up in no pain at all. And I had canceled the hotel the night before. I called Sabrina and I said, do you have anybody who could take over my room? 
maybe because I know the lodge is booked. She said, no, everybody that I know of is situated. And so I called the next morning to the hotel and they said, uh, oh, well, we left a note on a boss's desk, but um, they haven't had a chance to cancel it yet. So. <laughs> and so I looked for a flight. I got a flight. Um, I, f I opened a drawer and found, um, it's a long story, but a credit card that I never used. And so, but I said, Lord, um, and you know, I was one of those people that always, you know, we wear masks inside. Pennsylvania a lot. So, um, I, anyway, the Lord, I woke up yesterday, this is important, and I just knew I had to be here, and God showed Amen. me I had to be here. Amen. God did it. And, you know, when we talk about kicking and screaming and, and clawing our way, I said, Lord, I don't want to go, I don't want to travel, I don't, you know, I don't have the energy, blah, blah, and there's a scripture somewhere that says, you're going to go where you don't want to go. Yes. Yes. I'm going to take you where you don't want to go. Yes. Um, and there's, there's just so many things I want to tell you. I know, Bob, when you said there's a crossroad, and I do share with people sometimes that, yeah, there is this crossroad where we have a choice. I mean, we probably, I really don't feel like I have a choice. <laughs> um, but there is this place of, you know, are you going to do, I knew I needed to be where God wanted me, no matter what it was going to take. I yeah. threw stuff in the suitcase. I said, I don't care Amen. if it looks okay. I don't care Amen. if my nails are done. I don't care. Yes. I'm going and I'm going to get there somehow and just get me there. And uh, I'm so grateful. And to explain to my family, they'll say, oh, well, we hope you have a good time. But I, <laughs> I said, it's not a pleasure trip. I knew, and Bob, you said it, this is business. Yes. I knew it was God's business. Amen. I don't know how to explain it to my family. Yeah. They're like, well, logically, you don't have the money. You, don't, you, know, you haven't felt well on all these things. And I said, but I, don't, I didn't want to say it, but this is business. Yeah. This is business. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. there's just uh, so many things I wanted to tell you. I, don't know if I hit them all, but uh, I'm here, Amen. and I know God has me here for a reason. Um, and I uh, just don't know what to say. I'm so grateful for all of you. I appreciate all the ministry so, so much. Um, I think that's, uh, there's probably something else, but Amen. anyway, thank you Bless so much. <laughs> Thanks for letting me share. Hallelujah. Uh, Donna gets the DVDs of our services and watches online also. And um, I don't know, we're just a big old family. <laughs> we, 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 we have a big family. And uh, if you don't know us well enough to think of us as family, I'm, I'm here. I'll be here roaming around looking for somebody to talk to. If you see a guy roaming around outside going, that's me looking for somebody to talk to. But I had determined this weekend that I was, uh, usually to save my strength, I have to seclude myself a little bit so that I can be in the services doing the things that God wants me to do. But this, this weekend here, I want to make myself available to anybody that just wants to fellowship and talk and uh, talk about the Lord. If you need ministering to, I'm your man. And I mean that. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to lay in bed all afternoon. I'm going to be sitting out here somewhere around. And uh, let's take advantage of this weekend. Hallelujah. Especially those of you that I don't know, I want to get to know you better. Um, uh, so we are going to have lunch, and uh, that'll be from uh, uh, until 2 o'clock. So be sure to get in there and get the food you want, and then uh, so that you don't end up sweeping floors. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I th she's pretty serious about that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements we need to make?
Uh, is that it? Uh, tonight we're uh, going to be back here at 7 o'clock. So uh, hopefully you can get rested up for that and get ready. We're going to have a wonderful service tonight. I already feel it. I feel like as though uh, there will be going to be services. Every service is going to have its own flavor. And that's just the way I have found that God moves. Some services are just a blowout. And other services, God is counseling with us. And uh, we're going to have both. Uh, And we need the counsel as much as we need the blowout. Praise the Lord. They they all serve a purpose for us. So um, we're looking forward to tonight. Hallelujah. Darren, why don't you dismiss us, brother? Hallelujah. Well, I just want to say I knew when I took a bite of that peach cobbler, it was that was surely a sign it was going to be a good meeting because I felt the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together in your name, Jesus. Yes. And we just ask that you would continue to cause us to uh, cultivate and nurture the God within each other. Yes. Father, we just ask that you would let this food be a nourishment to our bodies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>